Finding purpose is not really a straight line. Sometimes we feel like this is a purpose, but then we start to lose the motivation and a passion later down the road. Most of the time, it's so hard to find a purpose because you think that all the impossibilities and risks that comes with it, and then you start to lose the motivation and a passion, and then now you don't even want to find a purpose. But it makes you feel like there's something missing in your life, even though you have a good career that pays well, even though you have a good family, good girlfriend. But then there's something missing within yourself, and now deep down, that you know that there's purpose that you're supposed to have. And nowadays, we have too many options and out there, and we have so many people telling you this is better than this and this is better than that, and all the people are trying to brainwash you with this mindset of benefit first thinking. But the truth is. Having ten thousand dollars that follow your strategy cannot be ten thousand people follows your purpose. That's how powerful your purpose can be. So in this video, I'm going to share Japanese philosophy, this full life path that can help you to find your purpose and actually start following your path. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sho, and in this channel, we share love and positivity with the Japanese philosophy. Twist a little bit in it. So if you like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and that helps me to reach more people, so that I can help more people. So let's dive in. So in this video, I'm going to explain this full life path and how you can implement this idea, and how you can actually find a purpose, and how you can follow your passion and your mission. And here's a full life path in Japanese. Tenme, your own path that is given by the God. Shukume. The path that your spirit has, ume, the path of love and creation, shime, the path that you have to challenge yourself to accomplish. So the first path we are going to break down is the tenme. This path is your own unique path that is given by your God, and this word is made by two letters, which we're going to break it down. So the first letter is a ten, and then the second letter is a me. The ten means sky or heaven. And then me means life, so it literally means life from God or life from the sky. The tenme is something that you're given, so it can, you can say that your own trait, that your nature, something that is already within you from the beginning before you start receiving the education and form the part of who you are. This is something that you already have when you're born. And some people even interpret this as a promise that you make with the God when you're in heaven. So this is your nature. This is your trait. This is a core part of who you are. It can be your strength, but sometimes it can be your flaws. We all have both strengths and flaws. Something that we are really good at. Something that really not really good at can be the insecurities. But either way, the most important lesson that from this path is to acknowledge and pay attention to what you are strong at, what you're really good at, what is your strength and what is your flaws. So that you can sharpen your knife, and then you can make sure that you're really good at what you're doing, but at the same time avoid mistakes by improving some part of your flaws, so that you can take a balance, and then your strengths can cover the flaws. So, for example, I'm an Aries person. I really struggled that inconsistency within myself, and I had a very, I had a, very, a lot of passion, and I really, like, I burned my fire, I lit my fire, and I burned my fire, and then like. Spend so much energy and time to it, and then three days later, I don't feel that. So that was my flaws. That was my strength and flaws. So that was absolutely in unbalanced condition. So I worked on myself because I found out that as my strength, I really love the challenge. When when something challenging coming up, I want to challenge myself. That the fire is lit. And I use that fire, and I use that sign of myself, and this is my nature, my trait, and to build a discipline within myself, so that my flaws are no longer flaws. But I understand that my nature doesn't waste my life on spending my time and energy onto something that I don't feel passionate about, something that I don't even want to do. And obviously, there is things that I have to do, the tasks, and then things that I need to do in order to. Pursue the things that I want to do. So what happens is that in order to take a balance with my strength and the flaws, that I build a discipline and a tolerance towards the stress and this inconsistency, so that I can actually find the passion and then keep my fire lit for a long time. So being aware allows you 
to find a solution to it and how you can actually take a balance and how you can actually alchemize your flaws into something powerful because this is also what you're given is your nature and in this life path what you have to do what you have to know and what you have to do is to be aware and acknowledge because you're not perfect i am not perfect either but understanding embracing our imperfection embracing that something that we might call it as an insecurity we might call it as flaws can actually become such a powerful thing there's a lot of people who did so much effort because of the flaws and then eventually that becomes like whole empire of the business and then it can be the whole talent so you never know how you can alchemize your flaws but it's all it all start from embracing and accepting and then trying to find a solution and trying to do something about it so keep working on yourself and sharpen your katana because even if you have a strength, even if you're talented, if you don't know how to use the best sword, best katana in the world, it doesn't do shit. The next life path is shukume. These two letters, shuk and mei, and when we break down, shuku means exist, it dwell, and then mei also means life. So every life path has a same Word, obviously, as you can, as you already know, that it's there's a life in each word. So shukume means the life that exists within you, the life that dwells within you. So if you think of the spirit that is existing within you, the spirit within you, that is the teaching from this path. In Japan, because of the traditional way of philosophy and in the, the way we respect ancestors and spirit, we believe in the karma, we believe in the past life, we believe in the reincarnation, we believe in those kind of things, and then we show our respect to it. And in English, you can call this shukume as a fate. So this path is basically the things that you cannot change. You're given, but then something that you can't change, such as your skin color, your parents, the, the environment that you were raised, and the whole thing that we embrace this question of like why why do i have to be japanese why do i have to be broke why i don't have this why i don't have that quite a lot of time that reinforces our victim mindset like we feel like we feel like an unlucky one but this is exactly what this life path teaches us because the most important aspect or the theme of this life path is the overcome is the conquest so this is the challenges and pain that you have to overcome and go beyond of your fate. And then somehow we all come here to learn and heal. I don't know why, I don't know why, but this is, apparently this is what we have to do. We have to come to this planet to learn. And we have to come to this planet to heal ourselves from the pain that may be carried from ancestors, maybe carried your past life. Every time that we come to this planet, we have to heal, we have to learn. And honestly, many people carry that parent's generational pain as well. Just because of how our parents are taught from our grandparents, how they, how they program to, to their kids and their child, and then grow on child, that has now just come on to us. And even though the things changes, you know, it's, it's completely different 100 years ago. It's completely different 200 years ago. So we don't need to believe the same thing of course we have to respect the fact that we are here because of our parents and because of our grandparents it's a miracle but at the same time you don't have to carry all these pains and limiting beliefs from our parents and from our older generation we can be the one that who face these fate and then actually overcome and then beyond go beyond our fate so in this life path what teaches us is that there's a certain things that we cannot change and our fate we cannot change we can't change our parents we can't change our skin colors we can't change where we come from we can't change that what we've learned when we were kids the past experiences that we had shaped the limiting beliefs and a trauma we can't change it but we can learn from it and then we can heal from it so that we can overcome the pain we can overcome the obstacles so that we can conquer what is holding us back so this life path is your hero's journey. The next path is a umme. So when you break down this umme, the un means move, deliver, transport, and life. So it's gonna it's gonna mean the life that moves, the life that delivers. In English, it will be a destiny. And the first two paths that we've done, temme and shukume, 
And these two paths, actually, you cannot change it. You cannot change these two paths. And then we have to learn, and then we have to embrace the way that we can actually go beyond of things that we cannot change. But the destiny, you can change by your will. The most important wisdom from this path is your destiny is not your destination; it is the journey itself. We think that destiny is somewhere that we're destined to be, but that's not how it works. The destiny is that as you go through, as you walk through your journey, that is the destiny. That it's constantly changing as you step forward. It can be your choices, the life path, this life path. The the umme is always changing by your small choices in a daily basis. It sounds like it's it's a very romantic idea, it's massive vision that we can think of, but the truth is, power of the umme is a hold within these small choices in your daily basis. So this life path teaches us to make conscious choices, understanding why you're making this decision. Even if you go to the gym, even if you eat healthy, why are you going to the gym? Why are you not going to the gym? Why are you not eating healthy? Are you conscious? Are you aware of the choices that you're making on a daily basis? It can be so small. It can be just ordinary moment that you don't even pay attention and even don't even link. To the words of destiny, but that's how much powerful that choices can be, because that choices that we are making is shaping your destiny. So be aware of the choices that you make, and always understanding why you're making these choices. Does it help you to be a better person? Does it help you to enjoy your life? Does it help you to be happy? Does it help you to love yourself? Or Are you making decision choices, small choices, because you're lazy, or you're making this decision because you don't feel like it, because you're afraid? So think why you're making this decision and keep moving forward. In the bigger picture, that is your destiny. And last but not least, shume. And when you break these two letters, the shi means use and serve. So this is life. So it's going to mean the life that serves. In English, you can say mission. You can say purpose. So the fast two path you cannot change, and this other two path you can actually change by your will. However, here is the most important lesson from Shume. This life path teaches us: every single one of us come to learn and heal and then pay forward. As a human being, your life purpose, one of the your life purpose, is to pay forward. To serve, because if you look at it, this word means mission, yes. But if you break down, that means that life that serves. So our mission, every single one of us, me, you, your parents, our biggest mission as a human is to become the life that serves. And here's the interesting thing: that actually we feel the most happiness, the strongest feeling of happiness. Is when we are contributing other people's happiness, and it don't have to be the massive thing. It can be as small as writing a letter. It can be as small as teaching people how to cook rice. And don't get me wrong, I've taught so many people how to cook rice properly, and I feel good about it. It can be as small as that. You don't have to be this famous, popular, amazing, excellent, brilliant Elon Musk or. I don't know why the Elon Musk came up, but it doesn't. You don't have to be that Michael Jackson. You don't have to be the Prince. You don't have to be the Dre. You don't have to be the Snoop to contribute other people's happiness. So your own purpose that resonate and intertwine with your passion and your desire can be something different. But in the bigger picture, your mission always to become that life that serves, because that's why we are here. But we often struggle in this life path because when you start something, then you start to feel like, oh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money to start a business. I don't. I don't have. I don't have this or that. And I don't feel like I'm lazy. And I'm too busy. So we have to deal with so much impossibilities and so much risks, so that you lose the motivation to actually pursue that path. 
So the most important aspect or most important lesson in this life path is the challenge. You have to find out how you can challenge the impossibilities and then the obstacles, the logical obstacles that you're seeing. You have your work nine to five, or you work in certain hours. You work six, seven days, or you have families, or you don't have enough money at the moment. What is a logical solution? What can you do to actually change the current situation? What you, can you do rather than saying that、like, I can't do it or I don't have this? So you change the way to communicate with yourself because this life path is all about challenge. Without challenge, you're not going to accomplish shit. There is no way that you can walk through a flat path and then to get to the Kilimanjaro. There's no way that happens. There's going to be bumpy road and rocky road. You might fall off the mountain. You might fall off from like this road. You might get injured. You might bleed. But that's the risk that you're taking, right? The mission, the purpose, ain't easy. But the real question is: Are you willing to go on that path? And I know most of the time we're just afraid. It's not about I don't have this, I don't have that. It's just fear. And I've been there. And I was so afraid when I started the YouTube channel three years ago. And let me tell you, I did I did make contents on YouTube, English and Japanese, and I put subtitles and I tried this and that. And then I worked so hard for one year, and I gained 89 subscribers. So let me ask you: If you worked your ass off and gained 89 subscribers in three things, 365 days, would you keep going or would you stop it? And I kept going. I kept going on a TikTok. I kept doing the YouTube. I kept doing Instagram until you actually start kicking off. But To be honest, if I didn't work the fast three path, I wouldn't probably be here. I couldn't be here. But I had to keep challenging myself to keep going, and it's funny now. But it was not funny back then. And obviously, there's a lot of things that I wish I could have done better because I didn't have anyone to talk to. I didn't have anyone to get get the the、um, advice from. I was just doing myself watching YouTube and reading a book, and just literally, I was in the, the dark forest, crawling the bushes, and I don't see shit. I don't understand nothing. But it was the path that I was taking. But as I said, the reason why I am here making YouTube and having so many followers on Instagram and TikTok and the growing YouTube channel right now is because I worked the three. Fast life path, the ten minute that I acknowledged my flaws, I acknowledged my weakness, and I identified and what do I have to do in order to take a balance, in order to alchemize my flaws into the powerful strength, in order to have something that unique and original, using not just the strength but then my also flaws, so that I kept sharpening my knife and then I kept working on myself so that I am balanced, even though I was not balanced. And that's how I found out, and I got to know myself better. And the shukume, the connecting within myself, and aligning with my spirit, so that I know that who I am, and I feel the connection within myself, or the higher power, you can say that, or universe, or God. There's always there's a strong power. There's a bigger picture than us. And as I said, I came here to learn and heal. So I faced my trauma, I faced my pain, and then I appreciate the wisdom. And then I embrace that my imperfection, embrace who I am, so that I can go beyond of my fate. And in Ume, I started to learn how to make a conscious decision, how to be aware of the decisions that I'm making, and then being aware of that I, how I have been making a decision, and then actually making a change on a daily basis. It can be as small as brushing your teeth. If you brush your teeth once a day, then you get the bad teeth. But if you are aware of your decision-making pattern and start making a conscious decision, hey, like we, I should have a clean teeth. And then, I know the example is a little bit off the topic from the mission, but it can be as small as brushing your teeth, because there's so much power, the movement, that delivers your life into a certain direction. 
And every choices that you're making is shouldn't come from your laziness, shouldn't come from your fear, shouldn't come from your ego. It should come from your intention, the positive state. Why are you doing this? Because I want to be better. Why are you doing this? Because I have a dream. And then we keep challenging ourselves because you are becoming the life that serves. And then that's how the purpose find you. If you're looking for out there and always like, ah, oh, where's the purpose? Where's the love? Where's the happiness? You're not going to find shit out there. You will find everything within you. You have to find a question that matches with the answer that lies within. But you cannot expect, oh, I want to be rich in six months. I want to find a purpose and I want to pursue my dreams in six months. You should take time. You never know. I thought I would accomplish things in six months, but apparently it took me two years to three years. But that's okay. If you have that willingness and attitude that I am willing to take two years, I'm willing to take three years, that patience is the new way of success. Don't try to be right or don't try to be quick. And again, having $10,000 that follow your strategy cannot beat 10,000 people who follow your purpose. Your spirit already knows your purpose. Your spirit already knows within you, okay? So don't give yourself too much pressure. Just be aware of a daily basis, the choices that you're making, and then go through this four life path one by one and actually really let it sink in and go through it, write things down and actually making a change by taking different actions. When you practice this four life path, the purpose will find you and then you feel the complete alignment within you. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the wisdom from Japan and Japanese philosophy. So if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Live your life like a movie.